Hello, the day has finally arrived. September 3rd at 6.20 p.m. Pacific, Venus in Leo finally stopped her retrograde motion, going backwards for 40 days, just a little bit more than that, and we've arrived at this day where Venus stops going backwards and starts to move forwards all the way through September and into the first week of October. I will give you five important dates for September, and these dates are actually connected to the past. Since June into July into August, the dates I'm about to mention and the planetary aspects and the connections that Venus makes go back into those months and we finally get to piece together a story, take what we've learned from this Venus and Leo retrograde and put it forth in September and into October where you can be proactive about this story if you're a venus and leo moon sun and leo leo rising have planets in leo this is definitely for you to pay attention to i'm going to have some dates on the screen you should mark them down you should write them down keep track the same goes for everybody here including myself so let's get to it i have a lot to say about this and let's get into the next uh graphic here is september 3rd venus and leo stations direct at 12 degrees at 6.20 p.m. Pacific time. Um, we've been waiting for this for a long time. Uh, uh, it seems like forever that Venus started to go backwards way back when, which was on the 28th of July at 28 degrees. Venus almost left the sign and then was back. It started its backward motion at 28 degrees and it's moved all the way back all the way back to this point, the day Venus is moving forward here at 12 degrees, and it's about to go over every single degree from 12 all the way to 28 again from now into September to the end of September. Then it has a little bit that ha uh, afterwards that happens into October, which I will get to. So that's the important thing. We want to acknowledge and celebrate this. What I will say about this is here's a chance now where a lot of the experimentation, a lot of the shedding of old factors for Venus and Leo and, and its retrograde cycle, and then it went when it went into the sun uh, in mid-October, the, uh, the weekend of the 13th, and then it's been moving backwards since. It's been it now has been appearing as morning star for the last week. It's starting to show themselves, but here it's still raw Venus. But here lessons can be applied from the retrograde journey and its journey since June. But we're going to go over a certain space and sometimes reminisce of the recent events, recent memories, but a chance to apply the things that have been learned in this rebirth process and to put them into motion really through, as I've always said with this, with expression through the Leo part of your chart, with at the root of what uh, uh, one's desire is and how passion fuels that desire. And so desires can be fulfilled. And Venus is going to go for this now and really try to do it until the first week of October. Well, let's get into the next thing I will show you here and is September 16th. This is the first huge date that you should pay, att uh, pay attention to. It has to do with Venus and Leo square Jupiter and Taurus at 15 degrees fixed. This is a huge place in astrology right now. And I think for the last couple of years is the 15 degrees fixed part. At this day, it happens at 11.09 p.m. Pacific. If you're on other time zones, this is September 17th. The most important thing you need to pay attention to, it's at 15 degrees. This is not the first time this has happened. As a matter of fact, this is the third time that Venus has connected with Jupiter. Usually in astrology with a square, there's a challenge that happens. It's a 90 degree angle and they kind of hit each other. And, and in this case, Jupiter enhances and in a sense can inflame or, or brings a, a, a more bigger, wider view to Venus and Leo. And there's been two other times that this happened. Here's the third and final time. The two other times that it's happened, and this is where you can make notes, is the first time this happened was on June 11th at five degrees. So at the very beginning of the transit, Venus and Leo 
square Jupiter and Taurus. And there we got a hint in the story. A first, one of the first chapters in the story of the Venus and Leo story of how Venus and Leo's expressing themselves, showing off, showing innocence. At that time, I don't think Venus and Leo really quite grasped what its journey was about to go on, but it was showing an old way of doing Venus and Leo extravagantly, over the top, and, and going for it all because Jupiter is enhancing was enhancing Venus and Leo. Then you could see here the second time was August 22nd here, which was not too long ago from when I make this video. During it, uh, Venus is now retrograde at this point, and you could see here it's at 15 degrees for the second time. And now we go to the third time on September 17th at 1.09 a.m. that Venus now squares Jupiter again at 15 degrees, the interesting thing here is, is Venus is not retrograde anymore, but Jupiter is. Because Jupiter goes retrograde. I'm making this video on the weekend here on the 2nd, September 2nd. Jupiter will go retrograde September 4th, the day after Venus starts to move forward. So, we could take a look at this chart on the 17th, the third time. And here it is, Jupiter square Venus. Um, you could see here I have it at 109. It's almost 110 in the morning. And I will uh, show you here what I, I feel about this, or I'll show you. You could see Jupiter here at 15 degrees. And where we look for Venus here at 15 degrees, this interesting point here where now Jupiter has been retrograde since the 4th, and it hasn't even moved. It just stopped moving forward, and it hasn't even moved, and it's still at 15 degrees. And here comes Venus. To, to show itself, to go over the top now, to, to fully express itself. And what it really comes down to is to show its worth and its value, Venus. And we also are looking to Jupiter and Taurus here because Jupiter and Taurus, Taurus is ruled by Venus. We go to look at this. I actually, at this point, feel like I the first two squares, I was like... It was over the top. One was connected to a lunation. And Venus and Leo is just going to go over the top anyway. But I think a lot of what's happening during the retrograde, there was some humbleness going on. And there were some tough situations relationally to themselves and with other relational situations. Hiding out. It's not flowing like, like it used to, like it, they're used to, Venus and Leo. They're not being seen they want it, the, the way they're used to. Or the way they're trying to express themselves just wasn't connecting. And I think Jupiter might have sh uh, put that over the top. Almost an overboard feeling the first two times but here in the third one i feel actually if this is used correctly you know we want to think about jupiter in a in the sense it initially expands so it's trying to help actually expand the venus and leo story but it maybe went too far the first two times but here i think i think jupiter doesn't have as much expansive power because it's actually retrograde and here it tapers off a little bit. It sort of kind of comes back in, contracts a little bit. And I think here, there's this is good. I like this personally because I think Venus has a little bit more leeway, a little bit more guidance, and has learned one lesson in this story of how to use Jupiter as to enhance the newly found way of expressing themselves when it comes to love and relationships how their creativity creative expression in a fire way this is what venus and leo shows us shows us to be proud of what we do and what we make and to really show itself here and here it's got a new wardrobe new costume it's on and stay on stage again raw not quite there yet but feeling pretty confident building some confidence now since september 3rd getting here to the 17th for the couple weeks here it's building towards this huge moment here. And so here, I actually like this. You still have to take into account Jupiter's inflation that could happen on Venus and Leo. And sometimes there is the caustic thing. It just depends on your own personal Venus and Leo story, the Leo part of your chart. If you're a Venus and Leo, Leo moon, sun or rising, you have to be really smart about this. I know you want to push yourself out there. You're ready to do this and you're two weeks in and you're starting to roll. You're, you're bright. And as a matter of fact, the 15th, 16th, 17th, Venus in the morning is super, almost at its brightest here we're going to see. So just take this into account. Here Venus is going to move through with this square and take on Jupiter with it. It's going to carry the Jupiter and Taurus kind of gift and energy with it. So 
there's that. So let's get to the next important date. I will show you here on my thing. Let's go over again. First time, June 11th. Second time, the 22nd at 15 degrees fixed. And here's the third time, the 17th at 15 degrees. But this time, Jupiter's retrograde. All right. So now we get to another place. And it's September 23rd. Five days after this, Venus and Leo will trine Chiron and Aries at 18 degrees at 1.17 a.m. Pacific. And this is the third time now that Chiron is trying, or Venus is trying Chiron. I will show you here the dates. Uh, first time was June 29th at 19 degrees. Second time was August 14th, 19 degrees. At this point, uh, uh, at the second time, Venus was retrograde, but we also around this time, Chiron went retrograde at this point. And then the third time is September 23rd at 18 degrees. You can see Chiron really hasn't moved. Now, my my way and feeling about this and thinking about this is I feel that I think it's been the secret amazing part of this Venus and Leo story. I think it's been of huge benefit considering the timing I just showed you in the three dates that especially the second date where they first tried each other, it was actually that weekend where Venus and Leo made a conjunction with the sun and went to the heart of the sun to be reborn. There's a death and rebirth process that happened there. And Chiron was there before and after that happened because Chiron tried uh, uh, Venus and then even trying the sun. It was this, it's this incredible three days, right? So Chiron was basically, and I've said this in my videos in the past, that Chiron has been helping, enabling in a positive way Venus's story and in, in its function of shedding its old ways of being Venus and Leo and trying to discover and to get to a root point, a raw, a pure point. Venus going through the sun and coming out afterwards as morning star. I have said before that Chiron has given Venus a potion, given a, in an insight on what like what life is. And life is, in one sense, connecting with our total selves. And part of our selves, our total selves, has to do with wounds. And here, because of the Venus, and retrograde, uh, Venus retrograde story in Leo, there has been wounds that have needed to be confronted in this story. And it just so happens that Chiron and Aries has been part of the story, helping Venus and Leo confront those wounds and see those wounds, but have a positive, deep way of, of integrating those wounds into the Venus and Leo self. Uh, we have to remember here that Chiron brings a clarity and an awareness of the wound of life and death in a sense of where wounds can go and where they can bring us and it's reflected that and given that in the potion to venus and leo and here we are on the third day we're going to look here the third time on september 23rd 18 degrees i could say even before that that chiron has been a a a wisdom person a mentor in venus and leo's life and it, you know helps venus pretty much Go th helps Venus pretty much go through the underworld and come out. And, and in a sense, now the third time uh, of bringing an, in, a, an intense, fresh, invigorating energy to the health of Venus and Leo for its, its journey here into September, into October. But really to keep going, especially in the Leo part of your chart, um, this is a huge deal for all those Leo people that I mentioned. Please make a notice. Please check this out. As a matter of fact, I have a wrong chart up here, but I'll show you the uh, the one the the chart here is what's going on. We'll go for the last day here. We could see at 18 degrees Chiron right here in Aries, and we're gonna go look at Venus here at 18, and they make this incredible trine together, the third and final one, the secret transit. I a part of this transit, I think, uh, really take this on and, and enjoy it. But there's something very important that happens this day, and it's a little bit of a challenge that Venus. In Leo, in a sense, uh, uh, Chiron has to deal with. And I think here, it's almost Chiron and Aries has helped 
Venus and Leo this whole time, but Venus and Leo in its wisdom that it's learned from Chiron here all these months gets to help Chiron in return. And I actually think this is an interesting way of the Chiron story working because a lot of times Chiron deals with like a wound we cannot see in our own charts. And a lot of times we find situations and people and relationships where we see that wound in them, not knowing we have that wound ourselves. And we help those people because we, for some reason we have this understanding or the subconscious thing that comes up to help them heal that wound. And in a sense, it helps heal our own personal wound that we can't see and here's a way it plays out here in this chart because i'll clear this out we look at venus now feeling pretty good right at 18 degrees it's got jupiter energy that it just is bringing with itself and here it is another great connection with chiron but if we look here if we look in the chart at 17 degrees mars and Libra, a place it does not flow in and it's having erratic energy for September and October is directly opposite, opposing Chiron and it's throwing this aggressive, passive aggressive way of, of, of relational politics onto the rawness of Chiron and Aries right here. So Chiron's not feeling this Mars and Libra thing. It's not getting the truth. There's relational stuff that's unbalanced and Chiron and Aries just wants to get to the heart of the wound and Mars and Libra plays games sometimes when it's not functioning the way it could be, a shadow side. But here Venus and Leo actually gets to help, help in a sense because Mars in, in Libra here is making a sextile, a positive connection. So you could see the triangular uh, uh, relationship that's happening here. And I think Venus here is the center point and actually gets to reciprocate with Chiron and Aries in a rare, uh, amazing moment. So that is the, one of the big days. Um, I know I went on about this, but I want you to see the dynamics here. They're, they're incredible dynamics and incredible if you're in, into myth and archetype and how you could take Chiron and Aries, Mars and Libra, and Venus and Leo and somehow find the connection within the three and f have that flow. In the end, I love Chiron for its... Um, in a sense, it's raw instinct in, in, in Aries and what it brings to get to the heart of the matter and the heart of the wound. And we are always, always thankful for the Chiron story. All right, so here we go. We're going to keep going here. Uh, here's the quick graphic for you to understand. We're going to go to the next thing. And it's huge, another huge day. And it's September 29th where Venus and Leo squares Uranus and Taurus at 22 degrees. At this point, Uranus is, is retrograde right now at 10.52 a.m. Pacific. And this is the third time that this has happened. We are going to go back and look at some dates where the first time this happened was July 2nd at 21 degrees. And then the second time this happened, Venus was retrograde in uh, August in, at this point in August 9th at 22 degrees. And the third time now, Venus is moving forward on the 29th of September, but Uranus is now retrograde. And here we have an explosive, amazing, almost final, final huge chapter in the Venus and Leo story of how we're ending the month. There's a couple other things I'm going to throw in here, some other dates here I have to show you in the last part of it. But here we are at the, at the last part, the last place of this and I will show you this chart here it is it's September 29th uh, uh, 1252 I yeah that's what I have here I have a certain date there <laughs> and I will show you here in the chart here's Venus now at 22 degrees you could see now the at 22 and we have Uranus at 22 and we see this square happening happening between the two and now I personally feel at this point that there is a shock, another shocking revelation because the first two dates we had a, a shock and something out of the blue come in with Uranus. And remember, Uranus brings a shocking electrical motion, but it's about breaking free and independence in the sense. And, and there's a rebelliousness to it at times and wanting freedom and space to bring something new. And this has already happened if we, you know, we're, we're looking at you know, these dates here, we had hints of this, and this is how you can tie in a story. We had hints of this the first and second time. But I think here, because Venus has moved forward, it's maturing, it's become smarter and wiser, hopefully. Again, I'm going to talk to you Leo people out there. Did you get wise? 
Did you get wise? I know you had a bit of an ego break and an ego smash, which is the worst thing that could seem to happen to any fire sign, but especially Leo, that they had to go internal and break the, and they broke down some sort of fashion wherever Leo's in, in your chart. But really, if you've got planets in Leo, you've got a story. You cannot tell me that it's been perfect. I, I, I know there's been highs and lows, but there's been an, inter an internal struggle and breakdown and metaphorical death and now this rebirth, but still raw, still needing to shed some of these old habits here. And Uranus helps shed some of the final stuff here. I think the first two times it rocked that old shell was part of the deal and wanting to break free and one was testing the ways of breaking free the first two times especially the second time during the retrograde cycle but it isn't what the, a venus and legal thought it was going to be if they were paying attention to the astrology but here in this particular chart we i think come to appreciate if you're flowing and if you're in tune and you've been humbled and you've seen why you've been humbled and accepted that and accepted your rebirth and now of coming on full force in your personal expression, showing what your new desires are, showing the passion behind that. We are seeing your incredible reflection towards us. We appreciate your generosity, but here comes an ultimate confidence. Here comes with Jupiter. You had Jupiter and Chiron now help you in a sense and bring you forward and now you're carrying those archetypes and you're bringing that with Uranus you're mixing those two planetary themes and archetypes now with Uranus here with rebellion and independence and progressive attitude and looking to the new and pushing forward this can be an amazing week or amazing couple days here that really solidifies and it's kind of the final chapters in this Venus and Leo story, we want to see the positiveness. We want to see the brightness and the creativity, the self-esteem, the, the solid self-esteem, the, the different ways and vessels of creative expression through creative vessels, through sexuality, through anything that you do to create with your mind and heart and soul and body. Venus and Leo, you're right there. You're, you're showing us, and, and it's electric. Remember, you're carrying Jupiter with you, you're carrying Chiron with you, and now you have Uranus with you. So do we celebrate? Do we pop some champagne at this point? Yeah, we can, but I will tell you. I will tell you here. I, I'm going to be very uh, um, careful because I want to show you something else in this chart. And we see the moon that day is really connecting the Chiron and the nodes. And it's going to be across that day and the next day across from the Mars and Libra, which is close to the south node, which is going, we're getting into the eclipse story, which is going to be intense within a couple weeks here. So we do want to pay attention to how our confidence and how our actions can affect others we first and foremost as a fire sign venus and leo you have to do what you do for yourself because you can't help it and you need to love yourself by loving yourself you take care of yourself by taking care of yourself through venus and leo you seek harmony within yourself and harmony through creative expression in the world some people aren't going to connect with it some people will but you can be aware about how sometimes expression can affect other people and i think this is part of of i think a shadow side of Leo where they be, uh, there's can be a pompous attitude or not an acknowledgement of other people's expression. I'm not saying you're doing this, you in particular, but this is sometimes happens. So here, I think the balance of showing oneself and expressing in this electric, vibrant, new, independent way, but also doing it in a sense with others, collaborators, people who actually can feed off of that and be reminded of, of their personal way of expressing. But sometimes we have to be careful if we're carrying jupiter that goes over the top and we're carrying a couple other things that we don't cross certain boundaries and, and in a sense go like get out of my way type of feeling right we don't have to do that because we learned our lessons so again september 29th is a huge day here i just want to bring this in september 29th at 22 degrees electric well do i end it there no because i promised a couple more days and I will bring in October 2nd because on October 2nd, Venus and Leo is going to try the North Node uh, in Aries uh, where the eclipses will be happening. And um, I'll, you know, I'll bring a chart up here in a second. And at the same time, it sextiles the South Node in, in 
and I made I made a mistake here. That's the south node in Libra. <laughs> That's what I meant there. It's the south node in Libra, north node in Aries. The graphic is wrong, but we'll go to the chart and I'll show you here uh, what I mean by that. Um, here's Venus now at 24 degrees, feeling pretty good. And you could see the sextile relationship with the south node. So Libra south node is ruled by Venus and Leo. So we got a good connection here that can help this kind of old uh, a south node Libra story of relational stuff. And we see how Mars and Leo or Mars and Libra is there connected to the south node. And also in a sense, uh, sextiling, sextiling Venus too. This is great. This is a good uh, uh, a part of the chapter for the Mars and Libra eclipse south node story. It's one good chapter at least because for me, that's, that eclipse story in Mars and Libra is not candy. This is only one of the rare moments where it's flowing. But we also see now here that 24 degrees, we're going to go all the way to the north node here and we see the connection as a trine. We want to make note of this. I think be, the reason is, is one way... Uh, Venus is in the middle of the of the Libra Airy story, and it just happens to be about relationships, and it just happens to connect with Mars and Libra. So here, if you're a Libra and Aries, and you got you got to things at this degree, you've been affected by the eclipse that happened at the end of April at 29 degrees Aries. You've been dealing with those parts of your chart. Venus and Leo bring some life and a way to move through the challenges creatively where people get to express themselves and it doesn't have to be a fight it actually can be collaborative in expression so think about if you were writing a play and a theater piece together and you're playing characters together to make the story like feel good but this is a rare moment it doesn't last but i wanted to point this particular point out it's a little bonus day and then i'm going to show you uh, a next uh, here a part here and it has to do with the next day because here, Venus and Leo now takes on a non-platonic aspect, not a traditional aspect, but it's called a quincunx. And it quincunx is Neptune on the 3rd, and then it does the same to Pluto a couple days later. And so you're like, what the hell is a quincunx? Well, I will show you what, what it is. And here now, Venus is at 25 degrees, and we said with Neptune. And you can see Neptune here. I'll circle this one green right here. We'll go right here. There's there's Neptune there, and you can see it at twenty at twenty five right here, and they're not seeing eye to eye. It's kind of a blind spot. It, they're not catching each other. So here, uh, a Neptune throws an illusionary fog, some non reality thing onto Venus and Leo here. For, for those couple days. And so that is kind of thrown into the mix from October 3rd into October 5th. And this is kind of the last week that Venus is going to be in Leo. And there's a little bit of fantasy run amok or, or uh, off kilter here, where in a sense, we don't feel completely connected. What we thought was real is not here, or we don't discover that till later on. The Venus and Leo might be feeling love and feeling on top of the world in certain places. We just need to pay attention to this Neptunian and disconnect that happens on Leo. It's going to dissolve a little bit of Leo. It's going to throw the Venus and Leo off a little bit, especially since it's been on a roll pretty much through September. Okay. And then let's just jump through like the, I'll, I'll talk about that one, two, there's the fifth. And at this point here, we see at 27 degrees Venus, and we're now going to go to Pluto here at 27 degrees. And we'll go to green here to show Pluto right there. And you, they're not seeing eye to eye in here. It's a power play that's happened. Venus and Leo sort of ends its transit with a little bit of trickery from Neptune and a little bit of a power struggle from 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 Pluto and Capricorn. Some in the astrology world might not take an in conjunct, aka in conjunct is is quincunx, where you know you and I are talking to each other, but it, we're not talking. My words are going to the right or left of you. We're not. We're like two boats missing each other, and. There, it could be off and caustic here and the need to try to connect, but it never connects. And with Pluto here, Venus, we could see how a power struggle happens here. Venus and Leo gets tested these couple days and it ends with a Pluto test, I, which I find is fascinating, actually. It's a Pluto test. But I think here Venus and Leo gets through it okay, has a little bit of a scrape and says, hey, I'm still Morningstar. I, I just went through the underworld, Pluto. I just did this. But thanks for the reminder and the power control game that you're trying to throw on me. So there is that. 
And I will, uh, to end here, that happens on the third quincunx Neptune, the sixth uh, Venus Leo quincunx Pluto. And on the seventh is a huge day. I will, and please make note of this. Venus and Leo hits 28 degrees, the degree of the retrograde station on July 23rd. They call this the end of the shadow. So base, basically on the seventh, which here I have October 7th, we see here that Venus is at 28 degrees. This was the place on July 28th where Venus stopped and went retrograde at 28 degrees, went all the way back to 12 here, to September 3rd, stopped going retrograde at 12, and has moved forward through all the degrees that it went over since the 28th. And and we just transversed it all. And we just made the journey back of hopefully applying lessons, hopefully learning more lessons through September into October. And I think this is a celebratory moment just for the journey that it has happened with Venus to get back. I finally did it. I, I'm not quite done with my journey, but I just been through a lot. I've been through a lot. And, and that is what happens on October 7th. Um, I could take a look at a couple other things in this chart that I in particularly see. I won't go there because those are for other videos. But but basically, um, we want to acknowledge this moment and connect. Uh, uh, and we pretty much am almost done. Venus and Leo, you have done it. You have been transformed. And hopefully, I'll say hopefully, I think at this point we... Um, we get to, I think, almost humbly celebrate on this one. I, that's the attitude I'm going to take. If you want to fully express yourself and you're feeling pretty good at this point in, in the Leo, Venus and Leo journey in your chart, you had a personal connection to this in your chart. By the way, if you don't know that kind of stuff, hit me up. I'm still going to talk about Venus and Leo uh, readings here because of what happens in September. Just You see what I'm showing you here. It's just an application of what has happened since June. I mean, this is huge. So to me, I've always said in my video, this is the biggest transit of the year is this Venus and Leo story and we're getting to the end we made it to the 28 degree point I have some thoughts on how I will end this video but let me show you one more thing and there it is on October 7th we hit the 28 degree mark and October 8th Venus finally leaves Leo and enters quiet humble Virgo at 6 10 p.m. Pacific if I'm correct this is on a weekend on a Sunday. And that is what I have to bring to you today. I hope you'll have the chapter markers down below. I hope you understood this and, and got into it. Um, if you don't know who I am, my name is Nicolas Polimonakos, a.k.a. Sparkles of Gold. Hit the subscribe button and the bell. Check out my links.